Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. We have been doing the properties, sorry, the methods of preparation of alcohols and phenols. So in this video, I will be discussing the index questions that is 11.4 and 11.5 which are related to this topic. So not wasting any time, let us straight away start with the first question. Question 11.4, it says, show how are the following alcohols prepared by the reaction of a suitable Grignard reagent on methanol. We know that Grignard reagents, they react with aldehydes and ketones to produce alcohols. And this is the general reaction that has been given because both in aldehydes and ketones, there's a carbonyl group, the CO group, which is basically where the Grignard reagent results in the formation of an adduct. And whatever the Grignard, the alkyl group is on the Grignard reagent, that forms the, that kind of completes the molecule. So in this question, it says that show how are the following alcohols prepared by the reaction of a suitable Grignard reagent on methanol. Since I have given you only the carbonyl group, let us first revise what the reaction would be like and then we'll take it as methanol and solve our question. So this is the carbonyl group of the aldehyde or the ketone, RMGX of the Grignard reagent. The uh, MGX part, this is the R is the negative part and the Mg magnesium is the positive part. And this is an ionic bond, therefore a properly ionic bond, therefore the halogen is definitely uh, BrCl negative, whichever it is, whether it is Br negative or Cl negative. So what happens? The pi bond breaks between the carbon and oxygen and the electrons go to oxygen. So oxygen becomes negatively charged. When oxygen becomes negatively charged, the carbon becomes positively charged because the two electrons have moved towards oxygen. Alkyl, which is partially negatively charged, will get connected to carbon, which is now positively charged. And oxygen, which is negatively charged, will attract the magnesium, which is positively charged. So you'll get an adduct. The adduct will be such that the R will attach to carbon and OMGX at oxygen. The MGX will get connected at oxygen. Now hydrolysis occurs with water. The molecule breaks down and it breaks down in such a way that the Mg X part separates out. Water is divided into H and OH. The H part attaches itself to the, it breaks here. The breaking takes place here. So the H part attaches itself to oxygen and the OH part attaches itself to the MgX. So it becomes MgOHX. This is the basic reaction that is occurring. If it was an aldehyde, the two, uh, I mean, the two species attached to this carbon would be hydrogen and hydrogen or hydrogen and any other alkyl group. Then it is an aldehyde. If both of these are alkyl groups, that is R, C, O, R, then it is a ketone, right? So both aldehydes and ketones will be showing this reaction. We have been asked that a suitable Brignard reagent has to be used on methanol. So this is H2. Both of these are hydrogen. So this is H2. This also becomes H2, CH2, all right? And here, this also becomes CH2, right? So now you have to, you have been given this product in the question. You have been given this product. You have to find out which Grignard reagent has to be used. And uh, since the original product here, you had H2C double bond O or HCHO, H C H O as it is written. So uh, where both the carbon, both of these are hydrogens and this is an oxygen. This is the basic structure of methanol. So this is what you have initially. And what do you need to get the resultant structure that is this? So let us write down. It is C H C H O or we can write, um, yeah, H H. C double bond O is methanol plus what will be the Grignard reagent? The Grignard reagent is only providing you the R to complete the molecule. In the end, the aldehyde that is the methanol is going to give you CH2OH. So in the product, CH2OH is the part which has been obtained from the aldehyde and this is the alkyl part that, that you are, that is R. Do you see here? R is added to CH2OH. 
So if this is CH2OH, this entire part becomes R of the Wigner reagent. So this is what you are going to be getting is going to be the R from Grignard reagent. So let us write the Grignard reagent with this. If this is R, I'll write it as such CH3, CH, CH3 and here you'll get Mg and let's take a bromide MgBr. Now do you see what is going to happen when the oxygen this electron goes here, the R comes and attaches itself to this carbon. So now I can write this as CH2OH, all right, CH2OH, I write this, this is CH2 and O, hydrogen got attached here and this alkyl group has attached itself to the carbon. So how is it going to attach itself to the carbon? Which part is going to attach itself to the carbon? This CH part. So I write the CH here. It has a branch CH3 here and a CH3 here. And this is the product that I wanted. Do you see? Oh, how did I spoil it? So a CH3 here. So this is the product that I was intending to reach at. So you could do another thing. Instead of writing it uh, like this, you could write the product or since we already have the product here, we do know how we have to go about. In this question also, the same thing. You have CH2 double bond O. Alright. So CH2OH, this is the part which has been obtained from methanol. This is the part which has been obtained from methanol. So R obviously is this. CH2OH is the part that was obtained from methanol and the remaining part was R. So here also CH2OH is from methanol. The remaining part is R. So let us start with methanol. H, H, C, double bond O is methanol. Plus R here is this. So I write it as one and MgBr, right? This will give the adduct and the adduct will be, uh, I don't need not even write down the adduct. I'll straight away write the product that I'll get at the end. If you want to write the adduct, then you will, um, the OMgBr will be there first and the this part will add to CH2. So I can write the whole equation. So this will be CH2OH, and at this carbon, you will get the, sorry, not OH, you will get this. This will be O, MgBr, then hydrolysis will occur, H2O, and so you will get CH2, OH, plus M G O H B R, right? That is the final product that you got, and that is what was wanted. C H two O H with the uh, cyclobenzene, uh, cyclo um, hexane uh, attached to it. All right. So now this is. Let us move to the next question. That is question eleven point five. It says write the structures of the products of the following. CH3, CH, double bond CH2, it is an alkene. And we have studied that you get alcohols when you carry out the hydrolysis of alkenes, acidic, or not hydrolysis, it is hydration. Hydrolysis means where water is used to break a compound. And hydration means addition of water. So this is catalytic, acidic, acid catalyzed hydration of benzene, which means a water molecule is adding. And you remember, if you remember what we did in when we did the uh, preparations of alcohols, I told you that this is a Markovnikov addition. Markovnikov addition says that water breaks down into H positive and OH negative or delta positive and delta negative because it's uh, we will not take it as an ionic compound. So the negative part of the addendum adds on to that carbon which has less number of hydrogens and the positive part of the addendum that is water which is being added the positive part adds to that carbon which already has more number of hydrogens and the negative part adds to that carbon which has lesser number of hydrogens that is Markovnikov addition so you can understand why this happens because of 
um, the mechanism. So if you need to know why this happens, watch the previous video where we did the mechanism of the Markovnikov addition. Anyway, here we write just the product. So the product is CH3, CH, the double bond breaks into a single bond. So at this part, hydrogen adds on, uh, sorry, OH adds on here. It's a Markovnikov addition. OH adds here and here you get CH3, right? One hydrogen adds on to the last carbon and to, the, to the, this carbon you will have the OH group adding on to it. So let us now come to this second uh, compound. If you look at this compound, you ha it has got two carbonyl groups. One is C double bond O here in the ring and the second is C double bond O here. But what are the two functional groups? If you look here, there is R, C, O, R, right? So it's a ketone. And if you look here, it is CH3, C, O, O, CH3. So this is an ester. There is a reducing agent being used, sodium borohydride. We know we use a reducing agent to, to cause or to turn, a, what is it, a ketone into an alcohol. But in order to turn an ester into an alcohol, we do not need a reducing agent. We just need to um, use hydrogen and we carry out the catalytic hydration or hydrogenation. So, or catalytic reduction. You do not need a strong reducing agent like this. Because when you have an ester, if you remember, if we took carboxylic acids, we turn carboxylic acids. If we want to get an alcohol from a carboxylic acid, we will first turn the carboxylic acid into an ester because it's very easy to turn the ester into, um, into the alcohol, which can be done just by hydrogen and a catalyst. You do not need costly chemicals like sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride. You don't need that. So when we are using a reducing agent like this, such a strong reducing agent, we will notice that what will happen, not this part of the ester, rather the reducing agent is going to act on sodium borohydride, will act on the ketonic part, not on the ester part. So we find that what happens here, the OH that is formed will be formed here. The one hydrogen will attach here and OH will be here and the rest, the, the ester part, CH2, C, O, O, C, H, 3 remains the same, right? Now, let us come to this last uh, question. Here you have an aldehyde and you're using sodium borohydride. So, when you have an aldehyde and sodium borohydride, it is a reducing agent. Aldehydes will also, the, with sodium borohydride, you will have hydrogen adding to it to give you an alcohol. So what will happen? The hydration or the, the reduction will occur. One hydrogen will add to carbon and one hydrogen will add to the oxygen. If you see the CHO, what is the structure actually like? The CH double bond O. So this bond breaks and one hydrogen will add here and one hydrogen will add here. So this will become CH2 and this will become OH. So we write the product CH3, CH2, CH, CH2. This will become CH2 and OH. This is the product that you're going to obtain. If you carry out the reduction with a reducing agent on an aldehyde. So, this was the, the, the index questions 11.4 and 11.5. And after this, we are going to be starting the physical properties. In the next video, we'll start with the physical properties of alcohols and phenols. So with this, I'll wind up this video. If you wish to watch the other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the uh, video. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Recommend it to your friends. I would be glad to help any kid who can score better marks by watching my videos. And thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.